So meanwhile, Joe Biden's handling of the pandemic has been disastrous, mainly because they just refuse to acknowledge the reality, which is that the pandemic for the vast majority of people is over. And when I say it is over, I don't mean that Omicron isn't killing people. It is killing some people. I'm not saying that Omicron isn't hitting people. It's hitting nearly everybody. What I mean is that how you choose to react to Omicron is up to you. And it is up to your local politicians and your state politicians and your federal politicians. So Barry Weiss of, uh, of former New York Times fame and Substack fame, Barry Weiss was on Bill Maher's show over the weekend. And Barry made the perfectly obvious point that she hangs out with liberals all day, which she does. She lives in a very blue area. Barry is, is not conservative. She is an anti-radical left liberal sort of Andrew Sullivan mode, uh, sort of in the mode of, of some of the members of the intellectual dark web. And, and Barry Weiss, she came out and she said, this pandemic policy will be remembered as a catastrophic moral failure. You will realize most importantly that this is going to be remembered by the younger generation as a catastrophic moral crime. The city of Flint, Michigan, which is 80%, I think, minority students, has just announced indefinite virtual schooling. In the past two years, we've seen among young girls a 51% increase in self-harm. People are killing themselves. They are anxious. They are depressed. They are lonely. That is why we need to end it more than any inconvenience that it's been to the rest of us. Okay, she's right about this. Now, hilariously, there are some people on the right who are very critical of Barry because the outpouring was very pro-Barry online. Okay, here's the thing, guys. Take your allies where you can get them. It doesn't mean... That folks who have been center left on this issue have been right the whole pandemic. They have not been. People were left at the beginning of the pandemic and were suggesting that we needed to lock down interminably. And then particularly people who are left after the vaccines were available, who've been following the Fauci's of the world, got it wrong the enti- nearly the entire time they got it wrong. OK, but now that the worm is turning, don't start saying that it's bad for people to join the club. It is good for people to join the club. Of course, this policy has been massively destructive and must never be allowed to happen again. But here is the thing. The public health bureaucracy will not allow it to stop. They won't allow it to stop. Now, down here in Florida, things have been normal for, what, a year, a year and a half? Like, people have been acting like normal for a year and a half, particularly if you're young and healthy. People have just been going out and living their lives. For If you were 20 years old and healthy in Florida, the pandemic lasted for about three weeks in terms of your personal behavior. Right? The first three weeks, you were freaked out, and then you realized it was hitting a bunch of old people, and you were like, okay, if I don't hang out with old people and I hang out with my friends, I'm fine. <laughs> okay, that was the mentality in Florida. And then once the vaccines were available, the mentality was, I'm done. We are finished. I remember last Passover, there was basically a fairly open, unmasked party. You know, that, that was like March of last year because the vaccines were now widely available to everyone, and everyone felt safe because they should feel safe because the vaccines were effective in preventing hospitalization and death. We are now like almost a year past that, almost a year past that. And still, the left will not let go, only in blue areas. Now, I'm just amazed by this. I-, I told you last week about a Paul Krugman column in the New York Times in which he was talking about how, you know, it's because of red state failures to abide by our strictures that Omicron continues. to. And it's like, dude, what's slowing down the country is you. What is slowing down the country is COVID paranoia. According to the Wall Street Journal, quote, schools may be open, but they're struggling. But here's the thing. I kind of noticed that this is relegated mostly to blue areas. Here's what they say. Schools should be open, pandemic or not, much of the public says. If only they all had what they need to function. Students at New York City's elite Brooklyn Technical High School played hangman in psychology class recently while a substitute sat behind the teacher's desk. They were eager to prepare for a coming midterm exam, but their usual instructor was out sick again. Everyone's kind of freaking out, said Delia Marcus, 17. We haven't really learned anything. The fast-spreading Omicron variant of COVID-19 has dealt a fresh pandemic blow to Brooklyn Tech, one of the nation's largest high schools with more than 5,800 students and among the most competitive with an admission rate under 10%. The problem there, and in many other schools, boils down to a mismatch between demand and supply. While many officials and parents nationwide push to keep kids in schools and away from remote learning, Omicron has left many schools short of the essentials needed to operate like teachers, substitutes, bus drivers, cafeteria workers, and sometimes students themselves. Teachers say they struggle to teach in classrooms while also delivering remote lessons to students who can't attend because they tested positive or were near someone who did. And yet the left can't let it go. They just cannot. So Kathy Hochul up in New York, she's still defending mask mandates for kids based on nothing, based on zero things. It's crazy. Here she is. I know people are tired, but I also will say one thing about the kids. My daughter had a meltdown over having to put sneakers on to go to kindergarten. She got used to wearing sneakers in school. I mean, it just... They, they adapt better than adults do. And I'm really proud of the parents who made sure that their kids understood this is for their safety and got it done. 
Okay, this is insane. I'm sorry. Kids do not adjust better than adults do to things like wearing masks. And if they do, it is because they have now imbibed the insanity from their parents and their grandparents. I don't know what kind of society sacrifices the future and the current welfare of their children on behalf of the 80-year-olds. I don't know what kind of society does that to prevent, to pretend that it is the kids who are the danger to a society where everyone is now having Omicron unmasked and the kids are the least vulnerable is totally crazy. But again, the public health bureaucracy can't let go because to let go would be to acknowledge that they got it wrong in the first place. So you still have Anthony Fauci out there. I don't know why he's still out there. He's still saying, don't get overconfident. Why is anyone listening to this dunderhead? Why? He's been wrong every step of this pandemic. It's amazing. Ultimately, they're all going to go in the same direction. There may be a bit more pain and suffering with hospitalizations in those areas of the country that have not been fully vaccinated or have not gotten boosters. But we do know, and that these are the recent data that have come out from the CDC, that even with Omicron, boosting makes a major, major difference in protecting you from hospitalization and severe outcomes. So things are looking good. We don't want to get overconfident, but they all look like they're going in the right direction right now. We don't want to get overconfident. We never want to get overconfident. We can't get overconfident. I mean, like, what in the hell? What in the hell? You couldn't control this thing the entire time. We can't get overconfident. Meanwhile, Biden's CDC director is still telling people that fully vaccinated now means boosted. That's what it means. Just endless. By the way, you know what the number one country on planet Earth right now in terms of per capita Omicron cases is? Israel, where everyone is like boosted eight times. In Israel, 80% of your body weight is now the vaccine. Here's Joe Biden's CDC director trying to say that, that fully vaccinated is now boosted. It doesn't matter if you, like me, had two doses plus Omicron. So I now have natural immunity. None of that matters. By the way, I think I had Omicron. I didn't test positive for it, to be fair. Although some of my family did. Anyway, here we go. Right now, we're pivoting our language. We really want to make sure people are up to date. That means if you recently got your second dose, you're not eligible for a booster, you're up to date. If you are eligible for a booster and you haven't gotten it, you're not up to date and you need to get your booster in order to be up to date. Yeah, they're just crazy. They're just crazy. Meanwhile, they're doing nothing, by the way, to actually get the COVID pills that people need in place. Right? The therape- How is it that we've known for several months at this point that there are therapeutics available that lower the rate of hospitalization and death by like 90 to 100%? This would be Pfizer's Paxlovid. Why, why is it that that has, has we still have like 200,000 doses available for a country in three, of 330 million? Like, this is nuts. Again, the failures on the governmental level are astonishing and continuing. But we are supposed to believe them, even though everyone has basically gone back to normal in their daily lives in the same areas of the country. So get the left should they can get as pissed at Barry Weiss and Bill Maher as they want. But the reality is that Barry and Bill have it right because we had it right before Barry and Bill did. How's this for a title? Ben Shapiro show subscriber destroys like button with clicks and logic. I'd watch that. Make it happen, gang. 